Hello everybody and welcome to One Player, in which I take us through some solo playing tabletop games. Today, I have the pleasure of setting up Gentis. Gentis? Gentis. Gentis? Gentis. Gentis. Hello everybody, today... I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, Gentis, it's the deluxified version from Tasty Minstrel Games. This box is phenomenal. The insert's great, the pieces are brilliant. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how much fun it was to unbox this. Sorry, I didn't put that on video. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on. So I'm gonna do kind of like a basic board overlay. That should only take maybe 25 to 30 minutes and then we'll get into some gameplay, I thought. Yeah, have a bit of that. The aim of the game is essentially to build up your gentus. I honestly, I've had to look it up and now I can't remember. Now I've joked around about it. I can't actually remember which one's right. Gentus? Gentus. <laughs> Gentus. The aim of the game is to build up your uh, civilization. <laughs> and to do that, we're going to build our population. We're going to play cards from our hands to build buildings and monuments and all sorts of like different constructions. We're going to build cities onto the map. We're going to take taxes. We're going to all sorts of cool stuff. The way that this works, there's six, you can see them here, six um, era, no, sorry, there's six rounds, three eras, so two rounds per era. Each round consists of a heyday where we get to build things and then a decline where we essentially have to tidy up and set up for the next heyday phase. During the, each of these rounds, we can take a number of turns. Now, the number of turns we can take is based on how many spaces we have on our kind of timeline here. And you can see that there's little wooden hourglasses that we're going to set on our timeline to, to show the passing of time. There's also locks to um, essentially block how much time we can take per round. Um, and I'm going to be searching for ways to get rid of these um, as the game progresses. You'll also see on here we've got population. So we've got um, a certain amount of each type of meeple here. So we've got nobles and artisans and merchants and soldiers and priests. That's going to correspond with this, this philosopher action, which we can take on our turn. We'd pay, if I can make that clear, I think that is. So... I'm gonna pay four coins for this and I'm gonna put this onto my timeline here and I'm gonna take one, oh, I'm gonna take one timeline piece as well or hourglass piece and put it there. So you can see that takes up essentially two action slots on our timeline. If I were to do that, then I would be able to increase my population and blah, 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 we'll get into that later. So that's the way that works. So we've got, we can great, gain our population, we can buy cards, we can play cards from our hand, which is right here, and we can build cities. Um, this little action, um, this little action tile in the middle here is essentially like kind of a, a free for all. We can do like one of any, or one of anything. That's only part of the solo game. Did I cover everything? I think I maybe did. We can just get started and when it comes up, we'll, we'll talk about it. What I have done um, to set up is I have taken two cards of my choosing, so I get to choose out of six, kind of like a mini draft for a solo player. So I've taken these two and then I've chosen my population, kind of corresponding to that. So it's a nice kind of way to get yourself set up. So you've, I've taken these two cards. Now this tells us what we need to play um, the card. This tells us what we what we receive. And then there's some more also sometimes bonuses that we get, like recurring bonuses here. So I've, I've chosen my population kind of based on these cards. So I've got three merchants and one artisan already chosen out. I get to choose four population. So right off the bat, I could theoretically just play this card straight away, which I might actually do. So if I do that, I'm going to take a chronicler action and I can either choose one of these. I can only do one of them or I can only do them. I can only do each of them once per turn, right? So I couldn't play this and then play this again. It has to stay on my timeline, but I'm going to choose either I pay zero, but I pay two hourglasses or I pay three and only take one hourglass. That's important because if we've got two hourglasses on one space, essentially during that decline phase that I talked about where we tidy up, we only get to remove one hourglass. So it actually stays on our timeline for the next turn. And as you can see, reduces the amount of actions we can take next go. So with that said, I'm gonna try and keep lean here. I'm gonna take the three. I'm gonna take one hourglass and place it next door. I'm gonna pay three of these wonderful, wonderful metal coins. 
I kind of want like 10 sets of these to play with every other game that has money in it. So I'm going to take three of those, pay that towards there, and I've played this card. Now as you see, I don't get anything from playing this immediately, but what I do get is these symbols um, line up essentially with other cards, it kind of gives some synergy. If I play another card with one of these symbols on, then I get extra victory points. For now, I can choose one of these and just score one because it's the first one that I'm putting down. So we're off the mark, one victory point. Yes. And then in the decline phase, in this moon phase, we'll get to do something else as well. So we'll get to that as well. Now, you'll notice that my port, my port here requires a city to be built. And it requires a city um, with this marking on this kind of like uh, Parthenon kind of building. This is going to be an interesting um, choice too as to where I start my civilization out. Um, the cities in the game give you various rewards um, when you purchase them and also during each decline phase. What I think I'm going to do and where I often like to start, well it has to be a, it has to be a Parthenon city now that we've given it that name. So I could choose this Gnosis, that gives us victory points. I can choose this Cyrene, oh, no, I can't. I can choose this Car Carthago, which gives us a cube to put on our board, and I'll talk about that maybe a bit later because I don't want to get too complicated right now. Why don't I play a city, and I'm going to play it down on Gnosis. So I'm going to take, again, we've got two choices. So this one, we have to take three um, timelines, which are three hourglasses, which I really don't want to do because that's quite a lot um, off the bat. And it's going to essentially have us keep two on our timeline for next turn. So I don't really want to do that. And I've got the money to pay for it. So I'm going to take this. I can do, I can't see my camera, unfortunately. So I can't tell if that's focusing, but I hope that it is. I'm paying six. I've got two hourglasses. Building a city is expensive. So I'm putting two hourglasses down there. I'm paying six to the bank. And I'm able to put one of these, again, Look at this, every, every, um, each player I get, I should say, like if we're playing multiplayer, you can choose different civilizations as four, and they each have different shaped houses. Ah, oh, it's so lovely. I'm gonna put my city down on Gnosis, and immediately when I do that, I get two victory points. Oh, and I should say also, if I already had a city in this red area, and I put another city down, I'll also gain the, bo the bonus for this as well, so all the reds based on where my cities already are. So that's kind of a cool thing that you can, you know, so you're going either, you know, Grecian or Roman, I should say, or Egyptian or Middle Eastern, you know. Anyway, we're putting this down here, we're getting two victory points, so we're really steaming ahead. And now we're gonna check this. Now, can we play it? Well, the answer is unfortunately no, we cannot because we don't have any scholars. We've got enough merchants, they only need one, we don't have any scholars, we need two of those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our last turn of the round to increase our population. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take this cube here, we're gonna pay four, I hope that is focusing, we're gonna pay four and a time, uh, an hourglass, I'm gonna get that word right eventually. And we're gonna essentially, up on here, so because we've paid four, we can choose either and you'll see the hopefully you can see these numbers so this says one one two three three four this one here with two people says three four five six seven eight so we've paid four that means that either we can choose one person from anywhere here to the left essentially any person or any two people from here to the left so we've got kind of a choice if we paid six for example we could choose any two people from here to the left so only two of these four Unfortunately, this one's the most expensive right now, and this is the one that I want. So I'm gonna pay four, train one person, and I'm gonna train my, my uh, scholar. He's gonna go buy one, and then what I would do is I would take, if say it was the priest here, I would take him and put him at the end, um, so that it kind of rotates around. Well, he's already at the end, so I'm just gonna keep him there. I can, if I've chosen to train more than one person, train the same person more than once. So for example, if I paid, um, three, I could choose this person twice. Okay, we're together, we're, we're ready, we're, we're good. So now we've trained up one scholar. It's still not enough to play the card, but that's fine, we'll get to it next turn. I really should have bought some cards because I used up all my actions, but there you go, we'll, we'll figure it out. That's the end of our heyday phase, we, we've, we've gone, we're done. What we're gonna do first, and thankfully, 
this actually tells us here, like kind of gives you a little layout of all the symbols that you have to do. So we're going to put all of our action tokens back that we've taken. We're going to lift off all the timeline, uh, all the hourglasses, or I should say we're going to lift off one hourglass per square. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then these, this, any that's left over are going to get shifted to the left. So we're kind of starting off next turn like we started off this turn. And that's fine. Now we're going to take any cubes off of any cards that are marked with cubes here and any cubes that are, or any meeples, giant meeples that are marked with cubes up here. And I'll show you what we're going to do. These, unfortunately, I've lost my opportunity. We're, we're just going to get rid of them. So these go out of the game. This one and this one. These will get shifted down. And again, it works similar to this. Uh, to this track where items to the left are cheaper than items to the right. I'm going to deal myself some more cards, and I know you can't really see these, but just I'll, I'll show them to you if they actually you know, come up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this meeple marked by the cube, and I'm going to move him to the end. So just again to give another bit of a rotation. Now I'm going to advance my uh, timeline or age or whatever you want to call it, era, yeah, I think that's the right word. So we're going to move that up by one. We're going to get benefits from one city per region on the board. So I've only got one city, so I'm going to get another two victory points. Then, <laughs> okay, then I've got a card here that gives me benefits based uh, in the decline phase, and I score two coins for every merchant that I've got, which is, in fact, three, what I started the game with. So I'm going to take six coins, and I'm pretty much back to where I started as well with that. I've got 17 money. It's the official currency of the game, money. And then I check to see if I've got more than four cards in my hand, which I do not. And that is the end of the decline phase. Let's start again. We're in another heyday. I've got this card that I can play after I train one of these fellas. I've got cards that I can buy here. I should have, maybe I didn't point that out already. These are the cards that I can purchase with this scribe ability. I'm looking for things that really already correspond with pieces that I already, or with populations that I already have. It's like, for example, like this one I really like because it gets, it allows me to remove a, a padlock, but it needs one noble and two soldiers of which I have none. So I'd have to spend quite a lot of money to upgrade my population to get there. The other ones I'm a bit closer to, I've got a road. Um, which gives me a free city, so that's kind of neat. I'm a bit closer to that. I'm quite close to this one, which I could get a well. And this one actually allows me to get twice as much money from this action, which I didn't mention. This is an unlimited action, so there's no um, there's no token for it. I don't have to put it on my timeline. But essentially a tax collector at the end of the, or whenever you play it, um, you take the amount of hourglasses and then you get money um, for it. This would allow me to take double the amount of money, which actually is quite compelling at the moment because, well, we're going to need money to do stuff. I think I'm going to buy this road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pay six. I'm going to take one hourglass. And I get this card into my hand. Then I shift these down and I replace at the end. So, oh, I like this card too. Again, look, removes the padlock and I get three victory points when I play it. Okay, this card, the road card we just purchased requires two scholars and one artisan. So I already have an artisan. I am close to having two scholars. Remember, we upgraded one last turn. We're, we're gonna need to do that. We're gonna need to make it, make another scholar. So we're gonna pay four, take this action. We're running a bit low on funds, but that's gonna be okay. We're gonna put an hourglass down. And we're, again, we've spent four, so we can either choose to do two from here, which we could do two priests even, or two nobles, or we can do one from anywhere here left. So that's obviously what we're going to do. We're going to chain our scholar, we're going to move him to the end, and we're going to move our population up one. Now that will allow us not only to play this one eventually, um, well, I suppose I could play that right now, or I could play this one. I guess it doesn't really matter too much, although this gives us money, which is good. Um, but it only gives us four. Or I can do this one and build a free city. Well, the way that I've done the best in this game is by hitting these bonuses. And these bonuses are um, essentially for playing eight cards 
for having a population of 18 or having six cities. Now these bonuses are worth eight victory points, but if we go past the second era without claiming any of them, then they go down to four. That's why these are all stacked here. So I do want to kind of concentrate all my activities onto one, either you know, playing cards, increasing my population, or building cities. I mean, obviously, hopefully we do all three at once, but I've found that usually it's kind of best to concentrate on one or maybe two of them just to make sure you get the extra four. I don't know, maybe that's maybe I'm giving too much credence to the, the bonus points, I don't know. With that said, <laughs> building a free city sounds pretty nice. I can also either put it, I could put it here and get a bonus, right, from all my red cities, or I could put it here and then make sure that I can get both bonuses on every decline phase. So that's a kind of a choice to make as well. Maybe this is short-sighted, but I'm going to play this. I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, it's going to cost me three, so I've got literally five coins left. And I'm going to play another of my cities, and I am going to play it in the red. I'm going to play it in Crotona. That gives me five dollars. Oh, I don't get to take the reward. No, I forgot it. Allows you to play it for free, but you don't get the reward. Maybe that changes my answer. I'm gonna put it here. <laughs> yeah, so then I'll, I'll at least get the reward in the decline phase. Okay, and don't forget, because now we've played two cards with a star, then I get two victory points again. Done, that's my heyday phase complete. I've got no more actions to take, and so we head into our decline phase. Pull these back, scoop, and then we take one off each of these. So actually, we're going to start next turn with no timelines, which is great. Over the cards, maybe I'll just skip this in the video because you know what I'm doing now. Oh, I tell you what, we've moved into the second era, so actually, all of these cards just go. Oops, all these cards are gone. This age is over, and we're going to deal a new age out that we are in the second era and you'll notice that these cards are well they certainly give you more points um, but they're obviously a bit more costly as well we also get to take a lock off of our board so we're starting off with a nice long timeline then i'm going to get both of these because i've got one city in each region so i'm going to get two victory points and five dollars coins coinages and again during my decline phase i get to claim two coins per merchant so i get another six so at least i've got some money to keep me keep me going next turn and that is it into our next heyday phase say i don't think i'm gonna be able to train enough people over the next two rounds to get the population bonus i also don't think i'm gonna be able to play six cards so I think the cities is probably my best bet to try and build up. That said, I'd also like some of these cards, because that's where I'm going to get my victory points from. I'm close-ish to that. Maybe we do a bit of everything again. I mean, why not? So this, I need two more nobles, but I've got everything else. So I could, as my first turn, populate my nobles, actually do them twice, and be able to play this right off the bat. I have to spend one... I have to buy it and then play it. So that'd be one, two, three. So then I only have one left, which I suppose I'd use to buy a city or play this. It's a lot of action points or like, it's a lot of time to take <laughs> to just play one card. Like it's essentially spending my entire round to get seven victory points, which is like maybe not the worst I could do. Certainly it's the, big, it's the biggest victory point haul on the board right now. Yeah, let's do it. I don't know. Let's just give it a go. So we've got, we're doing this. We're buying a card. We're spending six on it. Okay. We don't have an hourglass. We're buying the estate. Oh, you know what, I'm, what I forgot to do is when you slide these, you're supposed to slide the cubes with them until the decline phase, obviously, when we get rid of them. All right. So I've done that. I've bought the card. Now I need to train my nobles. So I'm going to spend four and actually train two nobles because this is four and it says I can train two so I can do two of the same person. Oh, I forgot last time to do this, didn't I? I forgot my decline to move this guy to the end. So actually, he is at the end. This person wouldn't have changed because he was already there. So anyway, a noble is getting trained twice. 
because I've spent four coins on him. So one, two, that's great. I haven't spent my coins yet, so those go in there. I'm left with six dollars. Now, I'm gonna play my estate card, because I indeed do have two nobles, one artisan, two, three merchants, and one scholar. Play that, gain seven points, to 16. And, oh yeah, I have to do this to take that, don't I? I have to spend three to do that. Oh boy. I also gain, because I've got two cards with squiggles on them, I get to gain two victory points for that, so that's one, two. Now I've got three dollars, which is a bit nerve-wracking. I would like to buy a city, but honestly, I don't think I could afford it. Um, oh, I forgot to put my own light hourglass, too. Um, I could play this card and get, get more money at the end of the game end of the, or the, the decline phase, so I'd get six. I'd end up getting 10 coins for that, which is not bad, plus five. So I'd have 15 coins at the end of the turn, which is pretty decent. And that should set me up to buy some cities, which hopefully we can get done by, no, I can't build four cities in a turn, can I? I have to build a city if I'm gonna try and get six before the third era. Tactics are occurring, whether they're good or not, I don't know. Let's, oh, I can't build this. Oh yeah, I can, I can do this. No, I can't, I don't have room. Oh, crap. So this, like I said, it's a cheap city, um, but it takes a long time. So you've got three hourglasses where you can only stack two of them on one square. So if I do this, I don't have space for three. So I can't build a city this turn because I've only got $3. I could, I suppose, get some taxes if I might as well just play this. So here we go, I'm gonna play this port. I need one merchant and two scholars, which I have. I'm gonna play it down. I've now got three squigglies, so I'm gonna gain three. Also this card allows me to gain one, so I'm gaining one. And then at the end of the turn, or in the decline phase, I get two dollars for each of my scholars. Dollars for scholars. Rightio, that was this card, wasn't it? So that didn't cost me anything, thankfully, but I did have to take two hourglasses. So we'll put those in. And now there's absolutely no way I'm gonna get any of these bonuses. So I've kind of done myself a bit of a disservice. And after going on and saying, these are things that you definitely should get, I haven't done that, but we'll figure it out. It's the decline phase. All right, so we're in the fourth, we're gonna be in the fourth round now. I'm gonna take, um, the only thing I haven't done, I've put all the cubes back, I've moved the meeples around, I've changed the cards, all that stuff. The only thing I haven't done is collected my city bonuses and collected my card bonuses. So my city bonuses, I get two victory points for that city and five coins for that city. And then for this, I get two per scholar, so that's four, and two per merchant, which is six, so I get a nice fat gold 10 coin dollars for scholars and we're gonna start round four heyday phase what do we get dealt out here like this one that's pretty nice six victory points and another merchant need to have a priest and another artisan oh, that's a shame because i'd really like i could get the priest really easily um, but the artisan's gonna be a pain this i need a bunch of priests for this i need this is okay, but it's not great. So I need one soul, oh, no, sorry, I need three merchants and three scholars, which I'm pretty close to. I get to take off a lock and I gain a soldier from it. So that is pretty decent. Should we aim for this card? Although I did say I was gonna try and build cities, didn't I? I get distracted in this game. There's too many different, I say there's too many. There's lots of different ways that you can like go about this and try to earn points, which I think makes it a really great game. Don't get me wrong. My scatterbrain can't handle it though. I'm like too, I'm like too bright and shiny. Like, oh, if we got this, I could do that, or I could do this, and I can, and then I forget what my overall tactic is. So, do I want to build cities, or do I want to play cards? I think we did figure out that I, there's no way I can get the city bonus. I don't think I can get the card bonus either. My population is actually not well. Yeah, it's still pretty far away. Two, three. What is that? Six, seven, eight. I've only got eight. I need to train 10 populace, which is not gonna happen. <laughs> All right, let's, start, let's go with the cards. I don't know, I mean, let's just figure it out. So we're gonna play the scribe action. We're gonna cost, which is gonna cost us six. 
an hourglass, and the card. Now we need another scholar, and to do that, I suppose we're gonna have to spend, we have to get him, so we're gonna have to spend four, six, coinage change, please. Spend four so we can choose one. I wish he was just one slightly down because we would be able to get two people at least, but no, that is not gonna happen. So we're gonna spend four, train one person, which is gonna be this fellow. So we've got three, we've got three, which means we can play this card. So we will do that because that's what we're going to do. We're gonna cost us three, one hourglass. And the good thing about this is that if we take a look at this card, it's actually a pretty good card. So we've got three victory points from that, so that moves us up to 27. We've got a soldier from it, so that gives us a free population. And we get to remove a lock right away. So that actually just frees us up to take one more action. We also, if you remember this, the squiggles and the stars and the circles and the whatnots, we've now played four cards with stars in it, so we get another four victory points. So that leads us up to 31. So that was a pretty good card. It gave us seven victory points and a population and a lock. I'd say that was actually, absolutely, that was my overall tactic. That was what I was aiming for. I was just, I was just kidding about that thing where I said I was confused. Um, that's the thing I wanted to do the entire time. So we're gonna slide and slide and this cube comes with us and we're gonna replace this. Oh, it's the last card of the era and it's a city wall. I suppose that I could buy another card because I do have one action left, although it would cost me, geez, it would cost me 10. Well, I, don't, I don't have 10, I don't have 10. That means I can't, oh, I can't build another city again. Ah, what am I gonna do for my next, what am I gonna do for my turn? I don't have anything to do. I can't afford to buy any cards, so this is out the window. I can't afford to build a city, because either it's gonna cost me six, which I don't have, or two, but then I don't have the time to do that. I can't play any cards, because I've got no cards in my hand. I'm just gonna have to waste this on getting money. That's so stupid. I feel like I've really messed up somehow. I can't even train another population, because I've already done it, and it'll cost me six to do like kind of that gimme piece. All right, so I feel I've made a bit of a boo-boo, some somewhere along the line, but I suppose it's better than nothing. I can do two of these, right? So these are unlimited. So I just put down two hourglasses and I basically, I just pick up eight. So, um, cause this one costs me one hourglass and I get $4. So I'm gonna pick up eight and I guess that's what we're gonna do. Bit of a rubbish end to the turn, but I suppose if I hadn't played that, then I still would have only, I've had a lock here, so I'd only had one space left anyway, so. All right, so we're on a, a you know, reasonable figure of, of 13 coins. Now, what I'm gonna do here, um, before we move into our third and final era, is pause the video and let's, um, let's make a part two. I will hope to see you in said part um, right after this. Um, but before that, if you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to drop a like, um, leave me any comments you have, any questions, and uh, you know, feel free if you're here just to hit the subscribe button. I would love to uh, love to have you on our journey of solo playing awesomeness. All right, that'll be it from me. Um, catch part two right now. And uh, thanks so much again for watching. See you later.